We're out here at the USA Cyclocross National Championships, and just like before, I knew that there was gonna be some exclusive tech out in the pits, so we're going around, we're looking at everybody, trying to find some cool stuff to show you guys that's out here at the National Champs. All right, so I'm here with Tanner Colbreth, the organizer of Ruts and Guts, a big UCI weekend that happens here in the States. One of my favorite races. Tanner, you got a cool setup here. What do we got going on? So as you know, any race, you're gonna get your bike dirty. You gotta have a portable pressure washer and a portable water tank so that you can you know, get water wherever you need it. And for us, we actually like this little device here. We actually made, I call it stubby. It's like, you know, a nice little stubby gun. Uh, so that you can wash bikes efficiently without the giant wand where you can't reach your drivetrain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's always like a thing that you see in the pit. The guy's got the bike, he's got it over there, but then he's got this huge, like, looks almost like a big, long, I don't know. Yeah, it's too long. It's giant too long. wand. Giant yeah. wand. You don't want the giant wand. This is actually, you know, uh, something that Bill Marshall kind of showed us a long time ago. And then we do a little electric uh, 1700 PSI pressure washer. This way, when our junior boys are washing their bikes, they're not blowing the logos off of anything. So, it's good. <laughs> All right, awesome. Let's see this thing in action. Oh, okay. Well, let me fire it up. Are you going to wash my pants off? Okay, so I'm here with James from the Donley Avolo Cyclocross Program. I'm here with Gage Hex Bike as well. It's uh, got some new stuff on here. Yeah, for a lot of the season, we've been running tubeless tires, which is a big departure for us. You know, seeing how we actually make a lot of tubular tires and have really good success with our tubular tires. Um, but we just see the future coming in tubeless, um, and it's just a lot easier for people, pros and amateurs racing, because you can change the tire out. Um, we made this tire, we changed the mold a little bit, so it would actually be UCI legal um, on a wider, more modern rim. Okay. Um, and it's a uh, really unique construction, um, you know, a very high uh, TPI round. We call it 240, but it's a little more technical than that. Uh, kind of make it really supple, but still durable and strong. Um, you know, riders love it. Gage and Lance have been riding these for most of the season, getting some wins at Pan Ams, Ruts and Guts and Boulder, some other races um, on these tires. and. They're all probably gonna run them tomorrow. Um, feeling super confident on the tubeless tires and no difference between it and the tubular, which is awesome for me. One of the other cool things that we saw here in the pits is Stephen Hyde's National Champ Edition bike has a unique 3D printed chain watcher. Apparently, for the conditions that are coming out here at the National Championships in uh, Washington State this week, uh, they decided that they were going to custom make a 3D printed chain watcher. I, as I look at it, it's very sturdy and it's crazy what you can do with the technology of 3D printing and then apply it to bikes. We've seen it on TT bikes, making special bits for the aero bars, for the pro tour riders, but now we're starting to see it come into cyclocross with this chain watcher. One of the other things that we've seen here in the pits, ultra top secret 140 non-drilled out SRAM rotors. The talk on the town is that these rotors are stamped just on the bottom, not on the top, because apparently the sand and the mud and the grit wear the pads down very, very quickly. The course here at the National Championships is very, very sandy, a lot of sand in the mud. So by running this stamped without any holes in it rotor allows the pads to have a longer lifespan. So we've seen these rotors way back in the day with Ryan Trebon and some of the other prototype SRAM riders, but now we're starting to see them resurface again under unusual circumstances and they're, they're quite cool. Here with Brenna, which is Clara Hossinger's personal mechanic from Team S and M. What do we got going on with this bike down in the uh, down in the rear derailleur? Yeah, so we partner with Wheels Manufacturing, which is a really crafty uh, U.S. company that makes a lot of like secondary aftermarket um, upgrade parts, you could say, um, for bikes. Very bike mechanic friendly, and uh, we run their angular contact bottom brackets as well as their uh, derailleur hangers. Uh, they just started making a. Uh, a specific kind of derailleur hanger that replaces the B-link on a Shimano clutch-style derailleur. So it's, they're calling it like a direct mount, 
uh, hanger. They're making several different kinds for several different frame manufacturers. It allows like a little bit of uh, versatility in the chain wrap so you can run you know, a variety of Shimano steering and uh, yeah, just like lose one extra little piece from the stock rear derailleur. It's Got cool. it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so maybe you, some gravel grinders might be interested in this. Uh, if you want to run a big cassette on your cyclocross bike, other mm -hmm. things like that could all be where this fits in. Yeah, and they tend to be quite durable. Like the aftermarket aluminum that they're made of is very rigid, so it holds up better than your general stock derailleur hanger. So, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm here with Chris McGovern. Chris, we just checked out some new tow spikes that you guys have. Tell us what's different, what's unique about these. Well, Jackalope Industry Tow Spikes, we've got three sets. I only showed you guys two. We've got the All Terrain, which is a hexagonal. Gets really good purchase. It's kind of the workhorse of our tow spike line. And then we made a special mud tow spike that's a little bit longer than most toes, and then it's flat on the end. And so when you, you can hear it digging into the mud, and it doesn't like rip out. It's just like, ah. But uh, we made them out of heat-treated stainless steel. They do not wear down. And uh, yeah, Tobin and I designed the three sets about two years ago now, and now we're, we're cranking them out. Yeah, you're Tobin Ortenblatt's personal mechanic, friend, and you guys have uh, done this endeavor together. Has he been doing a lot of prototyping with these? Yeah, we did. We did. We had some fun. Started with a little nap, napkin sketch and a little Google sketch, and then we got a CAD jockey to do it upright. You know. I love that. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that, like, uh, if you're doing like a crazy 180 around a corner on a pavement sit, what do you think they? How do you think they hold up there? Oh, we're gonna start a fire with those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, they look really cool. Thanks. Thank you. So that's a wrap from the pits here at the National Championships. Let us know what you thought of all that tech down in the comments. Let us know what you thought was the best. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe by clicking right in the center here.